Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Dental Podcast from Denplan. My name is Tom, and I am your host today. Things might seem a little different to usual, but we're adding a few more voices to our podcast so that we can continue to bring you clinical, informative, and entertaining content, along with pulling the curtain back a little, just to give you some insight into how we work. Today, I'm joined by Head Dental Officer Lewis McKenzie and Senior Events Executive Felicity Patterson, aka Flick, where we'll be talking about our latest webinar series, Working Together for Better Dentistry. Before we get into the interview, I will note that this was recorded on Tuesday, the 23rd of February. So when we do refer to tonight or this evening, that refers to the 23rd. Thanks. Hi, both. Uh, Just wanted to wonder if you could both give me uh, just a little bit of an update on who you are and where you come from and what you do. Hi everyone, I'm Flick. I work in the events and training team at Simply Health. Uh, I've been with the company about six years now and um, I love my job and I have the great pleasure of working with the wonderful Lewis very closely. <laughs> thank, thank you Flick. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've worked uh, together in events for, uh, for a, a large number of, uh, of years now, live, live training events. Um, so yeah, I'm Lewis McKenzie, the uh, Denplan's head dental officer. Yeah, and looking forward to chatting uh, about our latest um, record-breaking webinar series, which is the uh, which is the fourth. Uh, they started way back in April, literally just as uh, as lockdown um, had uh, had occurred uh, across the nation, and uh, started straight away with uh, some high quality. Um, webinars from a whole range of speakers throughout the whole of April and May, and were hugely successful with 90,000 registrations. Uh, that was followed up by the unbeatable uh, series, which was known as Unprecedental, which was a three day um, back to work just before the English dental practices opened on the um, 8th of June. Um, and that three day uh, series of uh, eight. Um, lectures in total uh, had 55,000 registrations and so so this was followed up uh, in November so we had another webinar series for Mouth Cancer Action Month which had over 12,500 registrations as well so uh, so that was all last year so we thought well shall we we'll see if the appetite for um, for webinars is uh, is is still there and um and it seems it is because we've got a series of 13 lectures which start this evening and um, we've already had uh, over 17,000 registrations. So it, it appears that the, uh, the, webinar, the webinar bug is, uh, is, not, uh, is not going away. And a, and a massive thank you to Flick and Chloe and the rest of the events team uh, for, uh, for putting these together um, in, for Denplan in partnership with, with Dental Update, with Oral B. Um, and in, in for, for Math Cancer Action Month, we also partnered with the Aura Health Foundation as well. So uh, massive thanks to uh, to the events and training team. Well, yeah, I think everyone's going to uh, everyone's going to agree with that. I mean, from what we've seen so far, uh, these have all been hugely successful and really, really fantastic and informative. I was lucky to be on and sort of be monitoring them when I first came into this role. Uh, in early 2020 and uh, the fact that we've continued to go through and be more and more successful each time is kind of testament to how uh, how brilliant everyone is at sort of pulling everything together in such sort of weird circumstances I'm going to try and not use the uh, unprecedented term too often but uh, let's get sort of going on this really so so Lewis could you tell me a little bit more about the sort of the, the genesis of the webinars and sort of where we came from from this because this was Sort of prior to, it's quite a new thing that's happened in the industry, really, is it? Yeah, very much so. I mean, webinars, I've been doing webinars for various different organisations for years. And, you know, you'd be, uh, you'd be cheering if you got 50 or even 100, uh, 100 delegates giving up some of their, their, their spare time. Um, but we realised straight away that uh, dentistry shutting down um, was just, I mean, it, it's, never happened before uh, and uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll never happen again and so you've got busy dental teams who go from literally sort of working nine to five pretty much back-to-back patients uh, all day long um, just to suddenly tidy in the uh, tidy in the shed <laughs> <laughs> 
and cleaning the uh, cleaning the garage. Um, and so, uh, so a real massive upheaval. And so, what we thought we would do is uh, give the uh, give the dental team, dentists, and uh, and all their practice teams the opportunity to to get some high quality CPD. So get their CPD out of the way while uh, while um, uh, everything's locked down. Um, uh, also, you know, we aim for sort of some high quality education as well. And so a, a lot of colleagues sort of when they went into the practices to to triage patients, uh, they they book off a little bit of time to listen to the webinars, which which were uh, throughout the throughout the day. Now, of course, since we've switched to evening webinars, usually sort of between seven and eight seems to be the sort of the, um, the sort of favourite time. But they've, they've continued to be popular. We've, we've again, can't thank uh, Dental Updates, the team there um, and the team at Oral-B for, for partnering, partnering with us uh, uh, as well. Um, and the aim has been to try and keep the quality as high as possible. So we've uh, aimed to use some of the best speakers from, uh, from around the UK and uh, and overseas, um, and a whole wide range of subjects. Uh, so uh, the, <laughs> the 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 first webinar series, we we made a point of absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with COVID. It kept it, kept it almost totally clinical. Um, uh, and then, of course, the the back to work series, the unprecedented series, which broke all all, all, all records and probably never be beaten. Um, uh, again, uh, was was purely to help practices get safely and efficiently into uh, into delivering a you know a full range of care uh, all with the limitations some of which are, of course still still in existence uh, so yeah it's it's uh, yeah, it's exciting times that it is it is still popular um but uh, uh, but again it's uh, what you you know you ask the question is this going to become the new norm i hope not because looking for to uh, to get it out there, and I'm sure Flick will agree uh, that yes. the lives, uh, there's, uh, the, the, there's there's no substitute for those as well. So we'll continue for sure. Our online program is going to grow and grow and grow, um, but it will be very much in support of the uh, the live events and training, which which is which is so popular. Oh, fantastic! And speaking of live events, Flick, you've obviously spent the majority of your time working on live events rather than electronic ones, I presume. So yes. what sort of challenges have you faced now? Like how is it? It's, I can imagine it's a totally different world, is it? You know, it is and it isn't. I think a lot of the fundamentals behind what we do as an events and training team are still there. We still want to deliver that, that top quality content. We still want it to be engaging and exciting for our clients. But when you're looking at challenges, I think that virtual world, virtual platforms, it's, it's new for a lot of us. Like Lewis said previously, you'd be looking at 50 to 100 people as being a success. Now you're looking at thousands per session. So I think for us catching up with that technology, making sure that we're still delivering our events to the highest standard that we can be, be that virtually or face to face, has probably been one of our, our biggest challenges. Oh, excellent. <clears throat> so one of the things that we sort of face nowadays is like this over-reliance on sort of technology and that's kind of where we've been forced to. Do you think, as Lewis was alluding to earlier, there's, there's a space for this to be in support. Do you both think that this is how we'll continue to do things going forward in the industry or do you think we'll start to, you know, with the news that we've had recently where, the, you know, the world is to start opening up a little bit in a couple of months or so, do we think that there's going to be more of a hybridization of these events or is it going to start moving back more into the physical realm? I think it's given us an opportunity to consider both. My gut instinct is that we will move into more of a hybrid space. Um, I think there's still a real drive and a real need from, from people, from clients to want to have that face-to-face -face interaction and to feel that their experience is very personal and you can't beat face to face, can you? However, you know, pe people are busy. They've had an experience of virtual world of webinars. And I think there are a lot of advantages people can find to that. So to my mind, as you know, as an events and training team, I think our goal will be to produce a lot of our events, a lot of our training in a hybrid style so that we we're giving our clients 
what they want, be that face to face, be that hybrid. Excellent. And uh, can we, uh, it might be a bit cheeky, but and we might be a bit early doors, but do we have any uh, any numbers that we're looking at so far? Lewis, you were saying that, you know, we were looking at record breaking numbers before and how are we looking so yeah. far? Well, say, uh, well, we've uh, 17,000 registered uh, already. Um, That's so, the day one, isn't it? Or for... Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that that's so, so. So today's the first day. Um, uh, Prof, uh, Professor Trevor Burke is kicking off tonight with a lecture on erosive toothwear. So he has over two thousand registrations now. Not everybody uh, might tune in uh, on the evening, but of course, the the beauty of uh, the, the web platforms is they they can watch them on demand whenever they want to. But uh, but yeah, it be uh, it will be yeah. Uh, also, a lot of people sign up the day before and on the day. So who, who knows how many, Trevor? I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if he has about 2,000 people listening to his opposite Northern Irish tones <laughs> this, this evening. So, uh, so yeah, he's, 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 a great, uh, he's a great person to go into bat first uh, and it, he'll set the bar, the bar uh, very high because he's, he's, he's literally one of, the, uh, one of the countries, if not the world's best, uh, dental lecturers. Oh, yeah, so. big, big numbers, Tom. No, that's fabulous news. And th- these are probably just going to keep in. Well, they are obviously going to keep increasing as we go throughout the next few weeks. Um, we were saying about CBD, and I think one of the importance of this is is how accessible that's now become. So, Flick, could you talk about sort of the accessibility of it and of the CBD side of things? Yeah, I mean, I think we've always. Um, as Genplan tried to make uh, our CPD offering as accessible as possible. I think from a, a training team, we look at making that bespoke, um, specific to what clients need. We've always tried to bring their, their core subjects together. But again, it's been in that face-to-face environment. So I think this has been a really good opportunity for us to look at that offering. Um, you know, and like Lewis has just said, it, it's been really interesting for us um, for, for Prof Burke tonight, you know, we've had people signing up, 20, 30 people this morning. So in terms of that accessibility, you know, I, we couldn't have had somebody just to come to a face-to-face event the day before. So I think it's made it easier for, for people to look at their diaries, for people to go, actually, I fancy that. I've got the opportunity to do that tonight. And also, like I said, is that catch up on that on-demand space that, again, we've never been able to offer in a face-to-face environment. So it's, it's definitely widened our, our opportunities of how we can um, allow our clients to gain that, that CPD in a really top quality environment. Mm. Excellent. <clears throat> no, that's fantastic. I mean, a lot of the feedback that we, um, that we receive on the social side of things as well is about how great not only the topics are, but the speakers are and the accessibility of CPD. Have you found any, uh, oh, this is sort of to both of you really, what, what sort of challenges have you found with this, if, if any, at this point? Um, we're getting pretty slick with it now, I have to uh, have to say. Uh, to begin with, we were making it up as we were going along. Uh, again, you know, the, the, web, uh, the web platform, the stability, the, you know, the incredible volumes of, of, of delegates, uh, the signals for the speakers. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, if, uh, if, if I'd had any hair to start with, I certainly wouldn't have any by now uh, anyway. So they're all sort of sort of technical challenges. Um, but, uh, but, I mean, the, the, the beauty that I found of working with the, um, the Denplan events and training team and, uh, and our friends at Dental Update as well is, is just that we're, we're a small group, so uh, we're able to sort of be quite sort of dynamic, um, everyone pointing in the right direction, everybody aiming for sort of quality we all we all get on um and so uh so yeah it, it, we've been on a bit a bit of a journey but we've all sort of stayed uh, stayed really friendly um and we're really proud that uh that uh, the, the the presentations that we've put on have um ha- have got such great numbers uh, and uh, and continue to have such such great um, uh, great interest uh, across the profession not just dentists but the whole the whole wider team as as well 
So, um, so, so yeah, the, the challenges continue. Um, there's, a, there's a whole new platform that we're trying out now before we had to sort of send the presentations, whereas now we're, we're all should be sharing our screen. So, um, uh, and, uh, and a massive thank you to, to Lisa. Lisa Dunbar has, uh, you know, we've all come and gone and done, I've probably done about, I don't know, 10, 20 webinars, something like that. I can't even remember. Um, but Lisa's done um, all of them <laughs> uh, in supporting the speakers and massaging our egos uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and working with the technical team um, uh, as well. So, uh, so it, it, it's, it's been good fun. It's, it's weird. We're not having, a, not having a, you know, we're all used to live lecturing, but we all had to, you know, pivot to this um, and, uh, and you still feel, uh, you know, because you can sort of type type your questions in. You still still really do feel that connection with the, with the audiences. Um, and, and, the, and the nice thing about the type questions is it gives you gives you a little bit more thinking time to, be, <laughs> to, to come up with an answer. And I think it, it humanizes everyone a little bit, doesn't it? You know, we all know this virtual world is is not the same, but I think we're all quite understanding. Of the challenges we face if you hear a, a dog bark in the background it's all sort of part of the charm now isn't it and um, like Lewis said I think we've we've really risen to the challenge and actually we've had quite good fun doing it still although there is nothing worse than when you're on a presentation and those those slides freeze as they're that's the longest <laughs> that's the longest period but you know I and we work with really professional speakers don't we so actually the content of what they deliver is still just been as amazing as it ever has been which has really really helped yeah totally agree. yeah i think people are used to now i mean not only sort of delivered a lot of webinars i've, I've watched uh i don't know hundreds uh, as well um and um yeah you, you kind of you know if, if it drops out just go on my cup of tea come back and <laughs> and, and carry uh, and carry on um or uh, so or, or watch it on demand uh so yeah, it's just it's just a different medium, but it's you know very flexible. I think you know we've all um, we, we've all adapted uh, adapted to it. Oh, fabulous! Are there any sort of things that you guys would sort of like to see in the future, sort of coming out from these events? Are there any sort of technical changes that you'd like to see, or are you sort of are we in that sort of high point right now? Do you feel? I think the next the next step, Tom, is virtual hands-on training, which we're which we're piloting as, uh, as uh, with some um, with, with, with some colleagues, um, and uh, so so it will be how to how to actually take the hands-on training into into practices or even home-based training as uh, as well. So cer certain um, station. Um, so, I mean, one of the nice things about dentistry, it, it, we've all had. A strong history of the use of simulation using sort of plastic teeth, uh, artificial jaws, those sorts of things, uh, to to actually practice things not not on a patient. Um, and so uh, again, the, the, this is the sort of the next step that uh, Dem Plan we're, we're um, sort of planning at the moment um, is hands-on courses that can be delivered to uh, into um, into practices. And again, this, this is going to open up some some more sort of practical challenges um but uh, but yeah i think and i think that then really will sort of um uh, be, be almost a revolution uh, really uh, because dentists will be able to you know access the learning stuff when they want to um and uh, and spend as much time as they want doing it as uh, as, as well so uh, so certain subjects sort of lend itself. Um, I'm not sure we'll, we'll get very far with oral surgery, but certainly from a restorative point <laughs> of view, um, and, and certainly endodontics as well, which has got a fantastic history of simulation. Um, so for me, that's 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 the next step: is is high quality virtual um, hands-on simulation training. So yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited about that. Excellent. I'm too excited. So I should should actually out more. <laughs> <laughs> no no but then we also the, the fact that you're enjoying this means that everybody else is enjoying it more so uh and it's great that you know you're leading with the enthusiasm that's going to be sort of sent across i think everyone can feel that in any of the webinars so it's such a wonderful place to be on i was lucky like i said to be on quite a few of them last year just to sort of monitor and grab some insight and 
you know, seeing the level of engagement that people are so sort of fascinated by that um, and so committed to what they want to do and the improvements is, is really, really sort of tantamount to the speakers and yourself as well for getting these things organised, guys. But yeah, I think that kind of wraps it up a little bit, to be honest. I think if there were, you know, we, we were sort of looking at these new ways of working and, you know, long may it rain that we can get as many viewers as possible on here, but at the same time, let's do what we can to get back out in the world when we can and find the best opportunities to sort of keep pushing the, the, the great materials that we're producing here at Templan as well. So I just want to sort of say thanks to both of you for speaking today. Um, really appreciate you taking the time out to speak to us. I think all of our listeners as well are going to have a, uh, some great sort of peek behind the curtain to sort of understand about some of the, some of the things that go into producing these webinars for us. So yeah, thanks again, both. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. So yeah, if anyone wants to register for the, uh, the webinars that we've got going on at the moment, the Working Together for Better Dentistry, so it's going to be running throughout February and March with uh, 12 hours of CPD up for grabs, should we say. You can find those at webinars.dental-update.co.uk and you'll be able to see all of them on there. The benefit that we've also got in place is that you can get these after as well and watch them on demand. For And the CPD can be claimed almost immediately straight from the completion of the webinar. And yeah, so thanks again for everybody. Uh, thanks again to the both of you for being on today and thanks for listening. We'll hopefully be back very soon with some more of our podcast episodes for you to listen and enjoy. Thanks.